Greetings, Internet. I'm here with my friend, Franz. Howdy. You know him. You love him. He's doing the mini project with me. And today, we are, we've got a lot to accomplish. Franz is here because he's going to help me throw on a lift, tires. I'm going to build a front bumper. Um, and by the end of this video, I want this thing to be a runner driver. So we have a lot to do. But first, let's take a look at the exact recipe we're going to do to get this thing in the air. The parts and pieces for this build are as follows. We're starting with a set of coilovers from a company called Max Speeding Rods. And these guys reached out to me, um, seeing if there's something we could do to work together. And sure enough, I looked at their website and they made a set of adjustable coilovers for a Mini Cooper and they're budget friendly. I wanna make sure everything we use on this build is super budget friendly. The whole set of coilovers is like 300 bucks, which is sweet. The reason I wanted adjustable coilovers is because I wanna be able to fine tune the suspension if we needed to get rid of a vibration or if we just need a little bit more lift on top of our lift kit. Speaking of lift kit, we have a lift kit from a company called Journeys Off Road. I cannot believe there's a company that makes a lift kit for a Mini Cooper, and I was so happy to find out that they did, because this is just something else that we don't have to spend a bunch of time building. We just get a two inch spacer from Journeys Off Road, we bolt it on top of our coilover, and boom, we should have enough lift to fit our new wheels and tires with a bunch of trimming, of course. This is a Milestar Patagonia. ATR, and this is gonna be an all-terrain, um, which is a huge, what gonna be? This is an all-terrain, which is a huge upgrade over the bald street tires that are on there now. And I went with a 15 inch rim to make it to where we have enough rubber to hopefully soften up the ride a little bit as we're going down the road. It come, the, the Mini Cooper comes stock with a 17. I decided to go with a 15 just to give us a little bit more space. So anyway, this is a 235-75R15, which is like a 28. It's somewhere in that ballpark, which doesn't sound very big, but for a Mini Cooper, it is huge. We're gonna have to cut the crap out of the wheel wells in order to fit these tires. Now the tire is mounted to a wheel from a company called Koenig. Koenig made it very clear when they sent these to us. This is not an off-road wheel, Nate. So try to be careful, Nate, and that's what I plan on doing. We are going to have fun, but I'm gonna try not to break this. I don't think we would have a problem, but how much would that suck? It would suck pretty bad. So this isn't necessarily built for an off-road Mini Cooper, but I think that with the, uh, with the right driving style um, and just keeping in mind that we don't have a full-size spare necessarily, uh, we can make it last. So that is the wheel and tire and suspension combo we're using. And then whenever we trim up the body, we're gonna be fitting a set of bigger fender flares. This is literally a universal fender flare that I just bought off of eBay for like $30 for the set. And um, I took measurements of the tire. I went on eBay, I found a set of fender flares that were really close to those measurements. So hopefully once we trim the body and make these wheels and tires fit, we can clean it up with this cheap set of flares. The plan for today's video is Franz is gonna help me get this lift and tires on the vehicle. We're gonna get it on its own weight, and then I'm gonna take it from there. I'm gonna do all the fabrication. We need to cut the wheel wells. I need to build this front bumper. I need to finish off a couple things on the roof rack, and then I'm gonna paint it all, and hopefully by the end of the video, we can have this thing running and driving and see how it performs. The lift went on super fast because it's literally just a set of spacers that bolt on top of your struts, or in our case, a set of coilovers. So as Franz finished up that work, I decided to get started on this front bumper. I just made a couple of plates and decided where this bumper needs to mount to. I'm building these mounts out of 3 steel to make sure that this mounting surface is nice and rigid, giving us a solid foundation to mount the rest of the tube work. What do you guys think? Franz and I are fans. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks perfect. It looks like it wants to go off road. It looks like it means business and it looks like it needs a super sweet front bumper. We're gonna do all tube on the front bumper with some nasty looking skids and whatnot. Clearly, I've got a lot of trimming to do on this body, but that's what this whole week is for. This entire week of work is gonna be just getting this thing 100% ready for the gambler. Um, I cannot wait to have everything finished, painted, and driving down the street. It is going to be epic. After thanking Franz for giving me the big boost that I needed to get started on this project, it's time for a whole bunch of tube work. 
I've got a bunch of ideas for different shaped bumpers in my head, so we just need to start putting two together and see what looks good on this chassis. this bumper out of a combination of inch and a half and inch and three quarter tube. Pretty much all of it is inch and a half except for the main piece that's going to go on the hood line. I only used 180 wall tubing because I wanted to make sure that this is thick enough to take an impact in the real world. Building off road bumpers is fun and making sure they look good is very important to me but by far the most important thing to me is that this is going to be a safe bumper that can still take a hit if it needs to. I've had a number of different designs in my head for a bumper like this, but I decided to go a little bit radical. I wanna add a stinger to give it that off-road look. It's a little bit ridiculous for something like a Mini Cooper, but I kinda want this build to look a little bit ridiculous. I think that it's gonna fit the character and the overall vision that I have whenever I think of how I want this Mini Cooper to look and feel. I know for sure I'm gonna be getting a lot of questions about clearance. And if you look here, I have removed a lot of body to make this tire fit. We still have a lot more to remove here, but I am cutting way into the body right now. So let's go take a look at the other side. And uh, oh, don't look at the bumper yet. We're gonna talk about the bumper once we get our clearance in the front all taken care of and I can get a little bit farther. But you can see here how much we had to remove because I mean, you couldn't even turn the tire the way it is over here. Um, whereas right now you can turn the tire on the other side because I've gotten enough removed, but it's still not gonna be enough if it's like flexing up at all and turning. So I still have to remove a bunch more on the other side. And we're really getting to a point where we might be seeing carpet here in a minute. <laughs> we're just, it's a Mini Cooper. It's made for tiny tires. And uh, this is just the name of the game whenever you wanna make something, an off-road rig that wasn't made for it. Franz, you are absolutely right. <laughs> I fell in love with the Mini Cooper. I mean, I've enjoyed the crap out of driving it around the last few weeks. It's just a thousand dollar beater. It's fun to just drive around a little cheap car. And this thing is fast, so it, it handles great. So it's just been fun. And now it looks like that. I mean, we're not even done. And I think it looks so cool. It, you're losing a little through the camera. I mean, you just can't get a good grasp of what it looks like in person. But I'm telling you, I mean, it just, it looks like fun. And a lot of this is over the top. That hoop is ridiculous. That roof rack is ridiculous. But I think once you put it, you, you, you blend all that together with these bigger tires and the lift and the flares, it starts to all make sense and complement each other. Um, at least that's, that's my opinion, that's my taste. So we have a bunch of work going forward still. The rear is pretty much done. I don't wanna build a rear bumper. So I just kind of trimmed the rear uh, in order to match the body line of these flares. And I open up those wheel wells quite a bit to give us lots of room for the rear tires. And then the front, I still need to cut the fender in half essentially, which bums me out. And the reason for that is because this is a universal fender, excuse me, a universal flare that isn't made for any particular shape or anything like that. And so we really had to flex it out in order to get it to 
bolt on to the shape of the Mini Cooper. And that is a problem because whenever we cut this, it's gonna give us two separate pieces that have two separate amounts of pressure. And so they're probably not gonna line up and it won't be near as pretty as it is right now. But we gotta be able to open the hood, so it's something that I have to do. Then once we're done with that, I'm gonna start working on this front bumper again. Uh, the Stinger, like I said, over the top, but I think that it totally matches the look and feel that I'm going for. Now what I wanna do is protect this AC condenser and the bottom of our radiator. So I'm gonna put some sort of a, I don't wanna call it a skid plate because that's not what it is. Just some sort of a, uh, I don't know what you call it, air diffuser, something to help protect. I'm gonna build a plate that's gonna go in front of the condenser with a bunch of dimple die holes in it to help protect it from rocks bouncing into it or anything like that. We just, it would be a bummer to be going down the freeway and have a rock kick up and go through the condenser and through the radiator or a stick on the trail or whatever. So we're gonna try to build a little bit of protection into that. Um, and then we have to build something on the bottom because this radiator um, and condenser hang down super low and it's just plastic under there that's just kind of bolting it all together. So what I wanna do is I wanna build some sort of a protective piece that's gonna cover that piece of plastic down there and then I'll drill some holes in it so we can mount a skid plate. protective piece is built out of a combination of 3 16 and quarter inch steel and the reason that it's a combination is just because I used scrap that I had laying around for previous projects. For something this important I wouldn't go anything less than 3 16 quarter some would say is overkill, quarter is pretty heavy but it's also heavy duty and I have a lot of confidence that this could take a pretty decent impact from a rock and not bend into anything too important. skid plate I'm going to use aluminum because I don't want to have to paint it. It's what I have laying around and 3 16 is actually a pretty good thickness for something that has this task. Remember this is not a rock crawler. It might occasionally see a rock here or there but this is essentially a one wheel drive vehicle and I'm not going to be able to get it so stuck that it's going to destroy this lower skid plate. At least I don't think I will. I guess we'll see in the next video whenever I take this to the gambler. Okay, the plan is changing just a little bit, but I think it's for the better. Instead of making like a cool panel in the front out of dimple dies and whatnot, we're gonna use extruded steel. And the reason we're gonna use extruded steel is just because of practicality. The original bumper actually had very little space for airflow. I was so amazed. Look at how thin that strip is, and that's all the air that was getting in there. The radiator goes from like the bottom of this all the way up into the grill. The radiator's tall. So it wasn't overheating before, but my concern is that I build some sort of a decorative plate. And then even though I put a bunch of dimples in it, it doesn't allow enough airflow. Um, and the last thing I want to do is overheat a perfectly good motor, um, especially if I'm going down to Oregon and I'm going to be away from all my tools and my shop and everything. So I think it's much more practical to use this extruded steel. It should give us a lot more airflow and it's still, this is actually really thick extruded steel. And uh, so this should give us some pretty decent protection, even though it's not going to look near as cool. So first step, finish weld. Second step, uh, figure, build some plates or something to mount a turn signal and a marker light on each side. Third step, figure out a way to mount this extruded steel. And then uh, I think we're going to finish up our uh, roof rack and then we can paint everything and mount it and we'll go drive it. It'll be a completed gambler project at that point. <laughs> Thank you.
After getting this bumper finish welded, it's time to make some sort of a panel that I can mount a three quarter inch LED into for a turn signal. There's probably a million different ways you can do this, but for me, I put a slight bend in a flat piece of steel with a three quarter hole in it. I welded that to the bumper and now I'm good to go. Then I wanna mount the bumper to the vehicle to do a quick fitment check and make sure that there wasn't a whole lot of distortion whenever I finish welded this piece. And now that I've verified everything fits, I can move on to the little bit of work I've left on the rack. I actually changed my mind halfway through this project and decided to order a full-size spare tire. Originally, I was just gonna mount one of the tires that came off of this, but with the huge difference in size, I wanna make sure that I have a full-size spare to make it easier to get off the trail if I ever need to. finally down to the last couple tasks that I need to do in order to make this vehicle running and driving. First, I'm gonna weld up a couple patch panels to the body in that place that we had to cut behind the tire, and then we need to paint everything, let it cure, and bolt it on. The day that I bolted this Mini Cooper back together and I mounted all this new stuff, it was absolutely gorgeous where I live. So I called my brother, I said, dude, let's go up into the woods and test out this Mini Cooper. Honestly, this is just an excuse to get outside and it felt like the ending of this video should be done out in the woods, which is where I wanna use this thing instead of in my cold shop. I'm out here in the mountains with my brother, Matt. Hello guys. He is reconnaissance today. If you see behind me, there's my Toyota. Um, I wanted to do a nice little trial run. We're just going over a bunch of dirt roads. We're going way up in the mountains. We're just, it's its Put an amazing- Put the Mini in its natural habitat. Put the Mini in its natural <laughs> habitat. And uh, man, I cannot tell you, I have owned a lot of really cool rigs. I have never owned something that has gotten so many thumbs up from strangers ever. You can ask Matt. <laughs> yeah. It's nonstop. Everybody yeah. loves this thing. Uh, so, how could you not? I mean, look at it. <laughs> know, it just screams not? fun. It looks fun and it is fun. Um, it's like the perfect summer car with the windows down, music blasting. I've been enjoying the heck out of this. So I want to run down. Um, well, first off, this is going to be the first time you guys have seen it all together. There it is. What do you think? I, I think that there's a number of different ways I could have done this, right? People are going to say, why didn't you paint the tube silver or why didn't you do whatever? This just matches my sensibility and uh, I, it, it fits perfect with what my taste is right now. I'm still gonna do a full-size spare up top. It's basically just the stock spare right now. Um, but uh, Milestar and Koenig are both sending me uh, another wheel and another tire so I can mount a full-size spare up there. Um, what else? Recovery. I know people are gonna be asking me why I didn't add any recovery points to this bumper. I think it looks cleaner without recovery points and the beauty of soft shackles is you can just wrap them around tube and you can yank out that way. So that is the plan there. And the rear, I have a recovery, like it's a factory style recovery point that just threads into the rear bumper. And uh, so that's what I plan on doing in the rear. What else? Um, oh, the recovery boards. So I said I was gonna mount these little recovery boards because they just looked awesome. They were super short. It was gonna match the mini in just an awesome way. But I didn't, everywhere I set them, I didn't really like the way it looked. I think it looks cleaner this way. And so what I plan on doing is uh, I've just got them in a bag that's in the back seat. And whenever I need recovery boards, I'm just gonna pull them out of that bag. They're, I'll put a link in the description for the recovery boards, for the lights, for everything I've used on here um, in the description of this video. It's from a company called Vic Off Road. What other stuff have I not covered, Matt? Have I covered everything else? I think that's pretty much it, man. I guess, well, let me walk through this thing one more time. The wheels are from Koenig. Again, I'll put the link in the description for all this stuff. It's a 15 inch wheel. The tire is a two, two, oh. 
235 75 R15. I've been telling everybody it's a 275. <laughs> well, shows you what I know. 235 75 R15, um, which looks perfect on there. I had to cut a lot of body out of the way, and I just threw some seam sealer on it and painted it black. And there we go. It still rubs and I knew it was going to, but I didn't want to have to pull carpet and all that in order to um, make it to where I can go full lock. I can turn like 98% without it touching. So that's just, that's just what I'm going to deal with. Underneath, we have got a aluminum skid plate and I could have went crazy with this and put dimples and all that, but this is a gambler build. I just wanted to throw it together quick and get on the trail. So this is 3 16 aluminum. It's just a sheet. There's a little special fan that's under there um, that everyone says you do not want to get a rock stuck in. So that's why I decided to make the sheet have no holes or anything because I want to make sure no rocks or anything can get. It's like a little fan. I think it's to cool power steering or something along those lines. Um, I just put some little turn signals here. Very simple. It's just a clean way to to take care of that problem. Um, what else guys? I think that's pretty much it. We got wheels and tires. I mean, in like two weeks, we took this from a stock Mini Cooper to this and you saw it just took a little bit of elbow grease and I just built a roof rack and I just kind of made it up in my head. I built a front bumper, made it up in my head and then bolted a bunch of inexpensive parts to it. And now I've got a fun little summer car. So you're gonna see me uh, using this at Gambler next weekend. Franz and I are going to go beat it up. Hopefully it survives. <laughs> if it survives, then uh, you will be seeing this in more videos in the future for sure. I hope you guys enjoyed this build as much as I enjoyed doing it. This is the fastest project I have ever done. It basically was like two weeks worth of work and uh, we were able to make this little transformation. So if you do like that kind of thing, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all the stuff you're supposed to do to so YouTubers that you like. If you want to help support us, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, net gators. We have a link to our Patreon account. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.